Just when it seems like the skies are ruled solely by massive corporations and factory-made machines, some passionate individuals are proving otherwise, crafting their very own aircraft in garages and backyards. Using old parts, pipes, plywood, and a heavy dose of creativity, these builders breathe life into home-built flying machines. Today, we'll explore the fascinating world of do-it-yourself aviation, where the dream of flight is fueled by skill, resourcefulness, and heart. The Minimax line of aircraft made its first appearance back in 1984. Primarily constructed from timber with plywood reinforcements, these planes are covered in fabric that's sealed using varnish. Most versions come with a windshield, but no enclosed cockpit. The wings typically span 8 meters, though earlier editions came in at 7.6 meters. Both the wings and the tailplane are braced with support struts, and the only shock absorption comes from the tire pressure. Every Minimax is built as a single-seat aircraft. It has an empty weight of around 181 kilograms and carries up to 38 liters of fuel. The 16500R Aerosport OS model runs on a 50 horsepower Rotax 503 engine. This version reaches speeds of 130 kilometers per hour at full throttle with a cruising speed of 121 kilometers per hour. Its operational ceiling is 3300 meters. Designed to comply with ultralight aircraft standards, many versions still meet these rules today. Its straightforward construction means that with some tools and patience, you can build one right in your own workshop. Is putting together a Kit Fox STI a tough job? Seasoned builders would say it's manageable, though it does require dedication. The assembly process resembles fine craftsmanship, where accuracy and care are essential at every stage. The fuselage is reinforced with stringers to avoid deformation, and the wing ribs are shaped for maximum efficiency. Next come the vertical stabilizer and rudder, both of which demand precise work. Hardware like bushings, brackets, and bearings are shaped in a workshop and smooth to fit flawlessly. Controls such as levers and the control stick are carefully fitted to reduce resistance. After several weeks of hands-on effort, your garage-built aircraft is finally ready to hit the skies. The Fly Baby is a single-seat wooden monoplane with an exposed cockpit. Designed by Peter M. Bowers, a Boeing employee, it first flew in 1962 and won a national amateur aircraft competition that same year. Builders follow detailed blueprints and often construct the aircraft with basic tools in their garages. Over 500 units have been built to date. The aircraft measures 5.7 meters in length and has a wingspan of 8.5 meters. It's powered by an 85 horsepower Continental C85 engine with a maximum speed of 194 kilometers per hour. Its landing gear consists of simple wood supports and rubber tires with no built-in suspension. The wings can be folded in about 15 minutes. There are also float plane, biplane, and dual seat versions. Even today, Enthusiasts continue building flybabies using original plans distributed by the designer's family. If you've ever dreamed of owning your own jet, the Subsonex JSX-2 might just be the answer. Compact, relatively affordable, and wildly fun to fly. This personal jet is powered by a PBS TJ100 turbojet engine that generates 1,150 newtons of thrust. The aircraft cruises comfortably at up to 386 kilometers per hour and has a flight range of 663 kilometers. It measures five meters in length with a wingspan of 5.5 meters. The cockpit is narrow, only 61 centimeters wide. Sold as a kit, it's surprisingly easy to get airborne. Turn the key like a car and you're ready for takeoff. The price tag, 148,000 United States dollars. If your garage smells of epoxy and metal shavings and you spot wing parts on the bench, Chances are someone's building an Airbike 103 Ultralight. The build starts with mounting a Kawasaki 440 engine at the nose, followed by extensive testing. Balance, directional control, and material integrity all need to be verified. This lightweight aircraft needs only 19 liters of fuel to fly. It maxes out at 64 kilometers per hour and doesn't require a pilot's license to operate. 
As a bonus, the seat is handcrafted. One of the most compact aircraft ever developed is the Rutan Long EZ. Sold as a self-build kit, it features a rear-mounted engine, pusher configuration, a small front wing, canard, and swept main wings with rudders at the tips. The engine produces 115 horsepower and can push the plane up to 298 kilometers per hour. It has an impressive range of 3,230 kilometers and a ceiling of 8,200 meters. With a maximum takeoff weight of 600 kilograms, the Long Easy is controlled using a side-mounted stick. In 1979, one unit flew non-stop for 7,700 kilometers. The aircraft is highly adaptable, with versions using diesel, electric, or even rocket propulsion. Some models are built with tandem seating. In 1997, two Long Easy aircraft circled the globe. Known for its efficiency and graceful appearance, the Long Easy remains a favorite among home builders today. In 2019, a group of engineers and hobbyists started working on a large drone capable of carrying a human being. The early versions used six rotors, though later they cut it down to four. Initially, the test flights used mannequins, but they eventually fitted a cockpit and handed over control to a live pilot. By September 2021, they had integrated a web-based interface that pulled data from the flight controller and displayed it on an iPad. Everything from accelerometer and gyroscope readings to GPS position, compass direction, battery charge, and system temperatures. The SD-1 Mini Sport ranks among the lightest and most economical personal planes available today. Made from a mix of wood, composite materials, and high-density foam, its base weight is just 115 kilograms. It accommodates pilots up to 185 centimeters tall, though a stretched version is also available. Behind, the removable seat back lies a 40 liter storage compartment. The wingspan is six meters and it carries 35 liters of fuel. Stall speed with flaps engaged is 63 kilometers per hour, while the plane can handle turbulence up to 163 kilometers per hour. The SD-1 earns praise for its straightforward design, comfort, and sheer flying enjoyment. The quirky little aircraft, known as the Flying Flea, took its maiden flight back in 1933. The name comes from the French nickname for the Ford Model T, La Pousse. Its creator, French innovator Henri Minier, envisioned a flying version of that simple, accessible car, something an everyday person could build and fly. The original model, the HM-14, was constructed from wood and fabric, with a front and rear wing setup and a single stick control system. Its 17 horsepower engine pushed it to speeds up to 100 kilometers per hour, with a minimum flying speed around 40 kilometers per hour. It had a wingspan of six meters and a 3.5 meter fuselage. The takeoff weight maxed out at 204 kilograms. Mignet even published detailed plans so hobbyists could build their own. Since then, more than 300 unique versions have appeared, including two-seaters, foldable models, and upgraded engine variants. To this day, aviation DIYers around the globe still assemble flying fleas, a testament to its enduring appeal. The Sietzustme Ultra Cruiser is among the rare ultralight aircraft made entirely from metal. Designed by Maury Hummel in 1999, it first took to the sky in 2000. It's exempt from pilot licensing and medical certification in many places. The empty weight falls between 114 and 122 kilograms, and its wings span seven meters. It's all metal. Structure and smooth, stable flight characteristics make it a favorite among builders. Most units are powered by a four-stroke V-type engine, though some use modified Volkswagen engines. Everything is pre-cut and pre-drilled, simplifying the build. The wings detach for easy storage, and builders can choose between tricycle or tailwheel. Landing gear. You can leave the cockpit open or add a canopy, though that starts to push it into light sport aircraft territory. Thanks to its reliability, ease of assembly, and approachable flying experience, the Ultra Cruiser has earned a solid reputation among ultralight pilots. The Open Sky M2J hardly qualifies as a traditional airplane. It's more of a flying scooter. The inventor drew inspiration from lightweight land vehicles like motorcycles and skateboards. Instead of a conventional cockpit, the pilot lies flat on top of the fuselage and steers by shifting body weight, much like riding a snowboard. 
It's a personal project that flies exclusively in Japan. A one-of-a-kind creation born out of experimentation and passion for flight. The aircraft known as a Kaishi, Japanese for redhead, tips the scales at 115 kilograms and combines several construction techniques. Its fuselage is welded from stainless steel tubing, while the wings are reinforced with metal above and fabric beneath. The landing gear forms a triangle using car leaf spring shock absorbers, and the control linkages are exposed for easier inspection. Struts support the bolted on wings. Power comes from a lightweight RMZ250 engine paired with a tuned Mikuni carburetor. It holds 10 liters of fuel and burns about 5 to 6 liters per hour. A plastic tail float helps balance the aircraft. It lifts off at 65 kilometers per hour and cruises comfortably between 80 and 85 kilometers per hour. Handling is smooth and forgiving, though the inventor admits the aircraft has a bit of a wild side. British engineer Ben Ashman created the ultralight PB with simplicity and performance in mind, weighing just 61.4 kilograms dry and under 70. Kilograms when fueled, it's exceptionally lightweight yet it can carry up to 120 kilograms of combined pilot and cargo. This compact biplane runs on a 26 horsepower engine that spins at 8,000 revolutions per minute. Its top speed reaches 88 kilometers per hour. The aircraft flies steady, responds accurately, and feels natural to steer. With a thoughtfully engineered frame, the PB has proven itself over four years of regular use, and is now regarded as one of the top ultralights in its category. Ideal for flyers who want to stay light without giving up stability or safety. Released in 2006, this compact plane can be made flight ready in just six minutes. Designed for takeoff straight from a backyard or open field, it features a straightforward control panel with essentials like a heater, airspeed indicator, and heading coordinator. Manual flaps, light switches, and other controls are all easy. To access, tires are taken from an off-road vehicle and the braking system is repurposed from a mountain bike. The tail folds down for transport. A three-blade Ivo propeller boosts fuel efficiency, while the Rotax 447 engine paired with a Bing 54 carburetor generates about 40 horsepower. It starts easily with a pull and climbs at a rate of 366 meters per minute. This one is clearly built with fun in mind. Next on the list is a two-seat ultralight built purely for leisure. With bright blue and yellow wings and an open cockpit, the CGS Hawk Aero the Sedstekasum offers the thrill of open-air flight and the ease of tricycle landing gear. Designed by hobbyists in a home garage, this aircraft isn't about speed or tech. It's about the sheer joy of flying. Just like some people crave the thrill of driving a convertible sports car, Others would rather cruise the skies in a plane like this. The lightweight Czech aircraft known as the ZJ Viera was once a favorite among aviation enthusiasts in Eastern Europe. Designed by Marek Ivanov in the city of Hradec Králové, it was available both as a kit and fully assembled. Its wingspan measures just 7.5 meters and it weighs only 77 kilograms. Power comes from a two-stroke Hearth F33 engine producing 26 horsepower although a 22 horsepower variant was also offered. The aircraft features a wooden, two-bladed, fixed-pitch propeller. It cruises at 110 km per hour and can reach a top speed of 130 km per hour. The fuel tank holds 12 liters. A mono-wheel landing gear setup supports the airframe, with small wheels at the wingtips. The cockpit is open and protected by a windshield. Although production ended in 2016, the ZJ Vieira remains fondly remembered by fans of ultralight aviation. The Bushcat aircraft is constructed around a tubular, aluminum frame with joints reinforced using stainless steel brackets. Its outer skin is made of durable sailcloth designed to resist moisture, wind, and aging. A one-piece curved spring landing gear makes it suitable for rough terrain. Inside, there are two seats and a single central control stick positioned just in front of the shared armrest, allowing for one-handed operation. The throttle is integrated into the armrest with both levers mechanically synchronized. Even taller pilots will find ample space in the cockpit. Powering the Bushcat is a Rotax 902 ULS engine, a four-cylinder, horizontally opposed, 
naturally aspirated engine celebrated for its reliability in light aviation. The aircraft's flight and structural performance meet high standards, with every detail thoughtfully engineered. Believe it or not, a crocodile-shaped airplane once flew the skies. In the 1930s, the Soviet Union built a passenger aircraft called the ANT-9. One variant featured a crocodile-themed paint scheme and was showcased at propaganda events, delighting crowds with its oddball appearance. Despite its looks, the ANT-9 was a workhorse of Soviet civil aviation, widely used across Siberia, the Far East, and Central Asia. Its cabin was Spartan, featuring nine seats, a narrow aisle, and exposed structural beams. In place of a toilet, passengers were provided a bucket. But the crocodile wasn't the only amphibian to inspire aviation art. A Belgian Air Force F-16 fighter jet received an eye-catching paint job that transformed it into a viper. The design was created by a modern artist known as Wolf Thrower, who spent more than four months gathering materials and developing the concept. Have you ever seen a sleeker flying machine than the Cirrus VK-30? Debuting in 1987, it was the first project developed by Cirrus Design and was sold as a kit for amateur builders. The VK-30 had a mid-mounted, 300-horsepower, Continental IO-550G engine with a pusher-propeller configuration. Air intakes were embedded in the fuselage sides, and the three-blade propeller sat behind the tail boom. The airframe was constructed entirely from composites, optimized for smooth laminar flow. The prototype was built by the Klappmeyer brothers, using parts salvaged from a crashed Piper Cherokee and a de Havilland Heron all assembled in a barn. It featured retractable landing gear and seating for five. The VK-30 made its first flight on February 11, 1988. Around 40 kits were delivered before production ended in 1993. The aircraft laid the foundation for later Cirrus models, including the SR-20, SR-22, and the Vision Jet. Russian inventor Vasily. Verbil has developed seven flying machines in his garage, his most recent is a single-seat helicopter, complete with a serious-looking control panel that includes over 10 gauges. The helicopter is flown via a central control stick, and its tail thrust design keeps the aircraft lightweight. The landing gear is rigid and lacks shock absorption. During one test flight, the machine failed to lift off due to hot weather. But that didn't stop Verbil, who remains determined to conquer the skies.